Coffee, thank you so much for the Canadian maple syrup. My husband this week. Why can't I play those two video games at the same time without stuttering? Me. <laughs> Darling, your PC only has eight core. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That's funny. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. I love it. Tech will be playing, I don't know, Battletech, and he'll be like, do you want to play World of Warships? I'm like, okay. So I crank out World of Warships, and he goes, I'll tap. Oh, many times I'll have more than one game running. I don't close a game when I no. want to launch another game. I, no. I, I'll i be encoding a video or compressing some files and playing a game, and then I'll launch World of Warships to play with her, and yeah. I got a YouTube video playing in yep. another screen. I, I want my computer, when I say jump, I want my computer to say, yes, sir, how high? Oh, uh, looks like coffee. He needs some more cores. Eight cores. <laughs> Ouch. Your PC only has eight cores. Oh, we need a shirt. Your PC only has six cores. <laughs> oh, get the poor man some more cores than coffee. Oh, and here's another common misconception that people point out. What? The 7800X3D kicks the 14900K on loads of games. Oh, we've got a lot of new people. Does it now? Are you sure? Watch too many Gamers Nexus benchmarks, have you? Gamers ne Nexus benchmarks aren't wrong. Steve does a very good job of compiling large amounts of data. The problem is, is he's showing you an RTX 4090 at 1080p. Who cares? You're not running at that condition. Y yes, in absurd scenarios, it is faster. The minute you crank up the resolution, the minute you don't have a 4090, the minute you have anything less than a 4090 and yep. not 1080p, most of that gap goes away. Now with a 4090 at 1440p, there is still some difference. With a 3090, there's not. At 4K, there's not. Here's the problem. All of those benchmarks that you all see, clean test bench, nothing else running, fresh install of Windows, fresh driver installs, everything's perfect. These are clean systems designed to produce repeatable results run on scripts. They don't sit there and play games. They have automated script runners. They aren't doing anything with the machines. The 24 cores on a 14900K on a real computer that you are really using that has real crap installed will be better than you think it is. So I understand why people say this. That's because they see benchmarks that are script runs on perfect machines that are wiped regularly, but it's not a real world scenario. It just isn't. Yeah, just keeping up with Junior. Understood. So, somebody else asked for AM4, a 5600 or a 5700X. Six cores is over, man, this is 2024. Eight cores is the that is the minimum you should be buying in 2024. Speaking of CPUs. CPUs. <laughs> this is here. We're going to go to Intel now. We've talked about AMD a ton. We Let's have. talk about Intel. Okay. This option exists for people who don't like AMD, want Intel, yep. and won't listen to me. Oh, okay. Go, press the button. That's an interesting combination of answers, isn't it? Yeah, and we've got a lot of new people here too, so this will be interesting. If you're new, you know what? That's an excellent point. Because we've got... Thank you, first of all. We've got 351 people watching, and there's a lot of new white names, and a lot of them that I do not know. Okay. First so, of all, if you're new here, thank you for being here. Second, my advice comes from using all of these CPUs. I have personally used every mainstream CPU that Intel and AMD have released from i3s to i9s and Ryzen 3s to Ryzen 9s going back 15, 20 years. Yep. 
Yeah. My computer experience dates back to the early 1990s. I have 30 years of actually being in the computer industry. I have owned my own computer business doing networking installs and IT support since 1996. And then I worked for other companies before then. I've done this a long, long time before YouTube. When we run benchmarks, we don't run scripts. We play the game. We play games and we run them while we're in front of the machine. It takes a long time and it means we cannot do as many benchmark videos as the big channels can, but our benchmarks are not script run. No. We were in front of the machine while it was running for every single benchmark that we've run. And we've problem. caught a lot of errors and problems mm -hmm. by being physically present, yep. by pressing F5 repeatedly, mm -hmm. by watching the real time record. Now we record on an external computer using a hardware capture card. The computer being benchmarked doesn't even know it's being tested. Yep. The only thing it's running is MS Afterburner in the game because of course it does have to be repeatable. However, we've got 12, 15 actual computers between our office and our house. We've got everything from Entry level, like our video capture machine is an i3-10100. I've got Ryzen 7 5700Gs, a 5950X, a 13900K as our video editing machine, and everything in between. When we switch between all these machines, you start to notice all the differences. And you go, well, come on, nobody needs that much RAM. Nobody needs all those cores. You know, people who don't use their computer much don't. No. There's a lot of people I completely acknowledge that a Ryzen 7 5700X and RX 6700 XT, 32 gigs of RAM and a 1440p monitor will actually meet a majority of PC users' needs and it will do so very, very well. It's not the top of the line, but it doesn't have to be. It's a really, really nice experience. It's not that expensive anymore. If you wanna play Fortnite, League of Legends, or World of Tanks and Call of Duty and Battlefield 2042, which, okay, that could actually use some more cores, but so be it, Apex Legends. Apex Legends will run a treat on that machine. What do you get for being on the latest and greatest? Yeah. Unless you're a pro gamer, not much. Apex Legends runs great on a 5700X with a 6700XT at 1440p. That's a great value for the money. Where I push back is when people say, well, since that works, no one needs anything else and there's no point to more. You may need more depending upon your use case. How much do we harp on use case? A lot. Do you have one monitor or two or three? That makes a big difference. Not because driving the other monitor is hard for your video card. Running a game on one monitor and having two monitors on either side does not inherently put a substantial strength. Your video card can do that very, very easily. However, if the game is on your primary monitor, you have the other monitors because you're doing something. Are you watching a Twitch stream on this one? Do you have a, a, a walkthrough, a cheat guide or something on this one? Or if you just have two monitors, you're watching videos. You've got Chrome open, you've got your backup running, you've got- You're coding, you've got- You've got stuff on the task tray, you've got all your launchers open. Something's, Windows is checking for updates in the background. When we benchmark, and this is true of Gamers Nexus and Linus and all the others, when we benchmark, Windows updates are turned off, antivirus scan is turned off, everything in the task tray is closed, GeForce experience is not running, the machines are clean. clean. If you really use your computer that way, go buy an Xbox. I mean, that's because that's what you're doing, is you, is you built a very expensive yep. Xbox. Okay, it's fine, you can have a PC if you want. I mean, customization mods, I get it. but. You basically built a really expensive PlayStation 5. Yep. Not everybody needs that stuff, but if you've got two monitors, if you do more than just play game. You mean like Anthony? What did Anthony say? Playing City Skylines, watching Daddy Deals, and downloading World of Warcraft. <laughs> Isn't that great to be able to do that? Yep. Not everybody wants to do that, but that's an example of how when somebody says you don't need more than X, but he can. Because yeah, but he's here's, done it. here's here's also where I'm going to put push back. Okay. No one needs to play a computer game ever. No. It's a luxury. Yep. It's all want. Any game you play is want. You don't need it. I mean, heck, an i5 2400 will play a lot of games today. It'll do it poorly. They'll be stuttering. It's old, but it will. So you don't need anything newer. 
that's the problem with the term need. And that's just why I try to say, if your budget allows. Yeah, budget. If you can afford it comfortably. If you can't, it's okay. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you any less of a member of the PC Master Race. It just means that your budget doesn't allow it. But if you can afford a 14900K, here's the last thought I'm going to offer, then we're going to move on. Okay. To everybody who says that a Ryzen 7 7800X3D is faster and better than a 14900K, how many of you have used both? I say this with all sincerity because if all you've ever done is watch other people's benchmarks and all you've done is read Reddit and see forum posts, I have extensively used both. Yes, when you press F5 and you run the benchmark and you're running at lower resolution with a 4090, yes, the 7800X3D is faster. I would never, ever, and I have a 4090. I would never take a 7800X3D over a 14900K. Not on your life. It would be a much worse experience in terms of actually using a computer. And this is the big central flaw of all the benchmarks that you see pasted all over YouTube and all over the internet yeah. where all they're doing is running scripted benchmarks. Just getting numbers. You don't need a 14900K to enjoy a computer. But if you have the money, it's an amazing experience. That's like trying to pick a partner from a Tinder profile without meeting him. <laughs> and just to be clear, this isn't an Intel versus AMD thing. No. I have a Ryzen 9 7950X in my machine. She has a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D in her personal gaming machine. This is not a, I think Intel's better. I think AMD's great. This is a... You, you won't appreciate 16 cores until you've had 16, 16 cores. And to everybody who wants to say you don't need them, try it before you say that. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Scroll up to Speech over. Speech over? Yes. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well.